the covert narcissist, things they do, the ways they manipulate, the things they might do, and the way you might feel when it happens to you. Because it can be important to learn to trust yourself and to learn to follow your intuition and your gut, so to speak, and follow your number one thing here. We're going to just say it. We all know it. What is the number one sign of a narcissist? Period. Lack of empathy. But what's that going to look like in a covert? Okay, so I can just tell you lack of empathy. Okay, whatever. Right. But the thing is, with covert narcissists, people feel like they see empathy. They experience the narcissist looking like they have empathy, looking like it is someone being compassionate, someone caring about certain situations, not about everything. So here's what you here's what you look for. For example, every time they display empathy they are talking about something that relates to themselves. So you know how you're talking to a friend and they're telling you something that you've never experienced in your life. You've never like, you've never had that happen. And yet you can empathize with how they feel about it. Wow. Sounds like that really hurt you. Like for real, you feel that like, oh my gosh, that sounds horrible. That sounds wonderful. Whatever it is, right? You're empathizing from a place of connecting with the other person's feelings and allowing that to be the real experience, not just because you can relate to it. Does that make sense? We all can relate. Narcissists can relate to they, some of them, <laughs> but a covert narcissist will use that. And if, if, if it's something that is, if they've done, they've experienced, they've had happen, they fear, they worry about, then absolutely they can relate to it and look like they have empathy, but the real empathy for like, you get into a, a discussion with them or a debate with them or an argument and you can see they're only thinking about themselves. They're only considering their version, their view. They're not including you with empathy in that discussion. Covert narcissism is a subtle thing. It is so subtle. People go years and years and years and years without understanding what's going on in their relationships. It affects every part of your life and it is so subtle that the rest of the world can't see it unless they know this person or unless they're really good at catching. Number two, passive self-importance. So an overt narcissist is going to be overt about how wonderful they are, how, how important they are, you know, whatever. A covert narcissist, a covert narcissist will, will give backhanded compliments, um, obvious minimizing of their own accomplishments in order to get you to give praise. They will fish for attention and they will fish for the compliments. They will fish for a comment. Number three, uh, blame and shame. Okay. These are, here's the thing. Everything I'm going to say here is what all narcissists do. It's the way the covert does it and the way you feel about it. The, the way you feel confused that you can see that it's a covert. Okay. Blame and shame. Uh, usually they use things like word salad. Um, if you don't know what that is, that is basically like filibustering or filling in a bunch of words that around a topic, it's very tangential and you get lost and forget the point of the conversation. It also causes shame and blame be because they're blaming within that word salad, right? And shaming you. So they might, um, send you, I mean, overts do this too, but the covert will do it in such a way that you feel guilty. You feel an overt narcissist shaming you is so obvious that yes, you might feel guilty for a second or, but you, you tend to get defensive and angry because they are so blatantly lying about everything that, that, and so blatantly blaming you that it's like, I feel guilt, but I know I shouldn't like that with a more overt type with the covert types, people will have them blame and shame. Plus do all these horrible narcissistic behaviors toward them and still feel like they're the one that's causing the problem. Does that make sense? Okay. So, all right. Blame and shame. We know that we, okay. If you've had that happen, you know what it is. Okay. Number four, they disregard. How do they disregard? They don't off, well, they, sometimes they turn their back and just walk away. Silent treatment, all the things that a narcissist does to disregard you. But 
they will laugh it off, make a joke, turn what you're saying into a joke, pretend you're not talking and be joking and, 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 and like you're talking about something serious, they act goofy and silly and, and not listening to you like a child, really like a child trying to dodge a conversation or divert from something. But what it feels like is you are being invis made invisible. You are being minimized. Your, your, your thoughts don't matter. You don't matter. You're being disregarded. You feel this sense of disregard. And it's in subtle ways where you're like, wait, they didn't actually say anything mean. They never yelled at me. They didn't say, shut up, you're stupid. They didn't say anything that's truly disregarding. In fact, their silence was like, not like mean silence. It was just like, they didn't hear me. You know, and and yeah, that's that's a, a subtle way the covert narcissist uses the disregard. Number five, emotional neglect. They know your needs, but they refuse to give it. They don't do it in the same way and over it will, but the way they will do it are things like um, they won't maybe outright forget your birthday, but they just won't do very much. Or they will do something and then start a fight in order to ruin the night, ruin the day, whatever. They will um, neglect, neglect you emotionally by um, say they know you need um, affection, emotional, like verbal affection, and they won't give it to you. But you know they know how because they love bomb you all the time. So it's things like that. And it's and it feels to to when it's happening to you, very intentional. It feels like this person is withholding something, right? Okay, so um, here's the thing. Emotional neglect can also be found in the love bombing because the love bombing is insincere. It's like gushing, loving attention when they feel like giving it. And that isn't an emotional, that is an emotional giving. That is a form of setting you up for later emotional neglect. Whether they know it, or it's just the way they operate, okay? Number six, um, they're smug but quiet. <laughs> they're not the same boastful types, but they are smug. It feels, what did I say here? It feels um, like barely being tolerated. Like they're just barely tolerating it, which is another form of disregard, right? And another form of devaluing. Their smugness is like, it's not like, oh my gosh, I'm so much better than you. What is wrong with you? Like that, it's more like, oh, uh-huh, when you're talking, right? Or mm, the way they, you know, you're just disregarded in this little smug way that's sort of quiet. It feels like barely being tolerated. Their body language and subtle words of disapproval. That's kind of what I was trying to describe. It's like, you know, or their body language of turning away from you or their body language of crossing their arms and like, what, you know, so yeah, um, facial expressions. And I think this is where we pick up a lot of triggers when we're out in life later on and we see someone make a face or we see, we have hear a tone in someone that just feels like disregard and we, and we react to it later because I think that the covert narcissist kind of, um, set us up for that with this particular trait. Number seven, self-absorption. Okay, their self-absorption, and what I wrote here is it's going to look withdrawn, sort of self-absorption, you know, victim. Um, a lot of them are very, like, vulnerable type victim, as you might, as people word it. Um, um, after the love bombing period, uh, listening is no longer happening unless it's about them. So when they're love bombing you, you get the attention, right? You get, oh, really? Blah, blah, blah. And and then after when they're not love bombing and they're in this devaluing, self-absorbed state, it, they only listen when it's about them. I can remember um, like just never feeling like I, I can remember talking and then just being like, yeah. And then Fred Flintstone came over and we sat and we like talked about how you have to use your feet for cars and then and 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 like and just not being heard. Like, seriously, it wasn't even looking at me with rolled eyes. It was like, what? Like, really? You're not going to... Okay, you asked a question. I'm answering you. You're so self-absorbed in your... Because I'm not talking about you. 
that you can't even listen to my reply to your question because your question wasn't genuine. Your question of how was your day and what did you do wasn't genuine. It's just what you're supposed to say. And the covert narcissist knows the words you're supposed to say. How do you tell the difference between someone that has poor communication skills or strained, how do they say, different slash poor communication skills and someone who is a covert narcissist? You look for a lot of these, these is only 20 signs that I'm going to go through. You look for these, or you pay attention. And if you're if you're going, yes, check, 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 check to all of them, doesn't really matter what we label someone, they're doing toxic behavior, okay? And they are, they're displaying a lack of empathy. They're displaying possibly their covert narcissist. You might want to back away and see what happens, right? Um, if it's once in a while that people do these things, I mean, we can all be self-absorbed. We can all be passive aggressive at times. We can all have our feelings hurt and not want to deal with something in a in a like meaningful real way and just be like, yeah, sure, right, you really meant that. You know, it happens. We get in moods. We get, you know, but it but if you're doing it, if someone is doing it regularly and with the point of never having reciprocal mutual communication with someone, that's when you start to tell the difference. So number uh, nine, highly sensitive. So you see, we're called highly sensitive, right? But let's talk about what that means when it comes to covert narcissists. Overreactive, take everything to the extreme with any negative feedback. You are walking on eggshells, right? It highly sensitive to their ego being hurt, bruised. Highly sensitive to criticism, highly sensitive to to asking for subtle changes, to having anything asked of them, to um, feeling like they aren't the perfect specimen that they claim to be. Anything that confronts their ego, they're highly sensitive to. Does that make sense? They have false humility, number 10, victimhood. They do it to manipulate they do it to get their way. They Not only that, they do it to get away with things. They do it to make excuses, to not have to have conversations, to not have to take accountability. So that's, that's the way in which that victimhood plays out with covert narcissists. It's a big one in covert narcissists. Uh, vic being a victim is huge in them. That can play the victim by flipping the script once they're caught or before they're caught through, um, you know, um, creating the narrative, right? If they create the narrative by telling everyone they're the victim before anyone questions anything, well, they can they can step in in that victim role and play wear that mask and manipulate from that level. There's always this this walking on eggshells feeling, right? With their, you know, oh my gosh, it's going to make it's going to go into poor me or that she's going to go into poor me. So, yeah, and 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 they use it. They use it against you. Okay. Number 11. Um Immature responses, easily offended, no accountability. Don't need to say a whole lot there. Number 12, minimizing others' needs, minimizing others' pain. All narcissists do that. The way they, the way a covert might do it is um, subtle. It's subtle. Subtle minimization. Subtle. Making you feel invisible, pushing you to the back, making you feel like you don't matter, not giving you direct attention. Number 13, lopsided attention needs. They're highly needy, right? All narcissists are, but they're needy in a way that is, it's not balanced with giving you your needs. So if you're dealing with anyone who just doesn't listen to your needs and at least try to, people don't have to accommodate your needs. That's the thing. Okay. That's where the more codependent type needs to learn not everyone needs to accommodate your needs, but we do need to listen to each other's needs and take it into, when you're in a relationship with someone, take it into awareness and work within the your own boundaries to sort of, sort of um, at least understand. I understand you need this. It's very difficult for me to give that right now. Can I do it later? Can I do it? You know, like there's ways of communicating that are healthy that Immediate needs might not be met, but it's always in the it's always within the dialogue between for both people. With a narcissist, nope, it's only their needs. Once in a while, they'll give you what you need. That's the love bombing, right? That's the breadcrumbing. All right. So number 14, controlling in ways that look like they are supportive. 
Have you ever had a covert narcissist or a narcissistic person really say, I've supported you through that? And you think back and you're like, no, you were there, but I felt completely alone. Number 14, I mean 15, sorry, silent rage. A lot of covert narcissists never raise their voice. A lot of them, some do. A lot of them don't swear at you, don't call you names unless it's like really subtle or really like once in a while, right? Like anyone might, right? But their rage is silent. So silent treatment. When I explained not knowing that you really just shouldn't delve into the issues with a narcissist, this is early on. And I explained that the, I read that the silent treatment is like physical abuse. It actually is received by me, the person receiving it, in the part of my brain that feels pain. And so when, when, when you're doing that, it actually hurts. The response was, oh, I don't believe that. Looks it up on Google, sees that it's true, and then doesn't ever do it again. So the silent rage started. Silent rage of hissing. <sighs> you know, like that's not silence. You can't say that's a silent treatment. You're getting attention, right? Um, or um, talking under the breath or staring you down and then making it what? What? Did you want to talk about something? I'm here. I'm listening. I'm not giving you the silent treatment. So you see, it's like this silent, you feel the rage, but it isn't coming out. Oh, it's horrible. It's, <laughs> it's horrible. Okay. Number 16, gaslighting. Well, they all gaslight, don't they? Their gaslighting is going to, again, spin back to victim, spin back to what? I didn't know. Their gaslighting is not going to be overt. It's going to be subtle, subtle, confusing, highly manipulative. This is one of their favorite tactics is to gaslight, twisting the truth, plausible deniability where they're telling you half truths. They're telling you the part of the story you want to hear. This is a huge one. Go watch another video. I will try and link on gaslighting because this could be an entire hour conversation about the way they gaslight. So um, yeah, number 17, they, they will devalue others in their life. You'll hear their opinions of others in the same subtle tone that you hear the devaluing of yourself. You will, they get wrapped up in controlling other people's lives through this subtle devaluing, but to the other people's faces, right? Number 18, extreme need for praise. I feel like the overt narcissist needs praise. They need praise from everyone all the time, but it's more like a given because they're already boastful of themselves. So the praise is just like, oh, I'm wonderful. And all you have to do is go, oh, and they're like, yes, yeah, see, you agree. You know, the overt is not as needy for the praise in the same way. The covert narcissist uses the passive aggressiveness, the subtleties. The need for praise is extreme. I, I asked once, what is it that you want? Because I'm giving all the time and I feel like it's never enough. And they, they said absolute worship. <laughs> so when you get them to open up, there's an overt underneath that covert shell. Okay. All right. Number 19, um, they envy and it can uh, be a need to prove others wrong. So they often have this need to put other people down and prove them wrong, to be right the other people wrong. And it's, it's subtle. Again, it can be through humor. It can be through like, just really quick, subtle jabs, right? But they're putting, they put, they, they need others to be wrong so they can be right. And number 20, um, they help others for recognition. A covert narcissist, like I was explaining, they will help for the recognition. It's not empathy. So there's 20 signs. There are so many more signs of covert narcissism, but those are things to look for. If you need anything, if you need coaching or group coaching, please check out the information in the description of every video. I can be found there. Um, I am always talking about the group coaching. So know that there's also one-to-one -one coaching if you need it. Um, I'm here to help if you need anything. Okay. Otherwise head over to queenbeing.com or uh, over there with Angie Atkinson and myself and others, and we can 
help you with information if you need anything. And we have lots of info over there. So check, check that out. Um, and that's it. I will see you guys next time. Hit the subscribe, the thumbs up, and see you later. Bye-bye.